on the Thank you. We turn now to First Minister's questions. Question number one from Ruth Davidson. Thank you. Presenting officer, earlier this week, three of our leading business groups in Scotland said this about the powers coming back to the UK after Brexit. They are not that concerned about where the powers ultimately reside. They just want the UK and Scottish governments to work together on a shared approach which maintains the UK single market. Can the First Minister really say that her actions this week have achieved that goal? First Minister. Well, I am and always have been prepared to work with the UK government on a shared basis. On the basis of mutual respect, that's not what is happening. I've said all along that the consent of this parliament to any removal of this parliament's powers, even for a temporary period, must be a matter of fundamental principle. So let me spell out to the chamber today what it is that this parliament is being asked to sign up to. We are being asked to sign up to an agreement that would allow the powers of this parliament in areas that really matter, like agriculture, fishing, the environment, state aid, public procurement, for example. We've been asked to allow these powers to be removed for a period of up to seven years without the consent of this parliament. And that's something I think that every single member of this parliament uh, really must consider. So perhaps instead of nonsense about the fact, uh, according to Ruth Davidson, that this government is somehow being unreasonable, surely there is a duty on all of those members of parliament who think that we should sign up to this agreement to set out clearly and in substance why they think it is reasonable. So I'd give uh, Ruth Davidson this opportunity today if she thinks that the agreement we have been asked to sign up to is reasonable, will she take the opportunity here in this chamber today to read out the sections of the UK government's amendments that deal with the consent of this parliament? I challenge her to do that. Let's see if she's confident enough. Ruth Davidson. The powers in dispute are powers and areas that this First Minister wants to send directly back to Brussels. And if she thinks, if she thinks she's helped provide certainty this week, why has she blocked a deal that would have done exactly that? Why is she putting her own political goals first? Because the UK government, the UK government didn't get everything it wanted this week, and nor did the Welsh government. Yesterday, the Welsh Financial Secretary, Mark Drakeford, said. It has meant compromise on both sides. That is the art of negotiation. And I believe the outcome is a mature agreement between governments that is respectful of each other's interests. It sounds reasonable to everyone else. Why is it that the First Minister alone doesn't get that? First Minister. Well, Ruth Davidson asked why this matters. So let me uh, give a few examples of the real implications of us agreeing to what has been put uh, before us. Uh, for example, if we were to agree this, it would allow for a period of up to seven years, for example, the UK government to dictate new arrangements for farm support in Scotland. It would allow uh, the UK government to force uh, us perhaps to lift our ban on GM crops, uh, which is so important to our environment and the reputation of food and drink. It could restrict our ability during that period to properly tackle obesity and alcohol misuse. It could have forced us, it could force us to relax. They don't like hearing this. It could force us to relax food standards regulations and perhaps open the door to US chlorinated chicken and anything else that was demanded in a trade deal. And that's just some examples of the real implications. But, presiding officer, I know that Ruth Davidson didn't accept uh, the opportunity to read out the sections of the UK uh, amendments. Be let me do that because it's important because this is what this parliament is being asked to agree to. Uh, so what the amendments say is that the UK government can't lay regulations to take away the powers of this parliament unless the Scottish parliament has made a consent decision. Now, so far, so fair perhaps, but then they go on to define what a consent decision is. That would be either a decision of the Scottish Parliament to agree a motion consenting to the laying of the regulations or a decision not to agree a motion consenting to the laying of the regulations or a decision to agree a motion refusing to consent to the regulations. So if we say yes, they'll take that as consent. If we say no, they'll take that as consent. And if we say nothing at all, they can take that as consent. It's heads 
They win and tails we lose. Now, I don't think any self-respecting member of this parliament should give those proposals the time of day. And this government will not do that. And let me say this, presiding officer, if that means that we are the only party prepared to stand up for the rights and powers of this Scottish Parliament, then so be it. Ruth Davidson. I'm not sure the First Minister did herself any favours saying that this would stop her tackling obesity in Scotland. That does no favours to her argument. She's the only First Minister in history that wants to talk about the powers she doesn't have. And the bizarre thing is the SNP could have claimed victory this week. They could have claimed victory because they asked for powers to be devolved to Holyrood and not all held in Westminster and they got it. They asked for a sunset clause on regulations on devolved powers and they got it. They asked and demanded that any deal be by agreement and they got it. Now, we all, all of us, all of us in this chamber express concerns about the original proposals put forward. But as Lord Hope, one of Scotland's foremost judges, said this morning, these are now being addressed in the amendments. So isn't it the case, isn't it the case that it doesn't suit the First Minister's political purposes to make a deal? So she's dancing on the head of a pin in order to find reasons not to. First Minister. Well, Ms Davidson said there that what we've been offered is an agreement where we would have to consent. That is manifestly not true. I point her again to the amendments that have now been lodged that would allow the UK government, whether we agree or not, to go ahead and restrict the powers of this parliament in vital areas for a period of up to seven years. Now, I think it's for every member of this parliament to decide whether they think it is reasonable for the powers of this parliament to be removed for a period of seven years without our consent. That is the question that each and every one of us is going to have to answer. And I think as we do that, we're going to see uh, what every party in this chamber is made of and where their priorities uh, lie. Now, the fact of the matter is, I've said consent is fundamental at every stage of this process and I stick to that. I will not sign up to the restriction of the powers of this parliament for a period of seven years without our consent. Now, we have also, of course, offered solutions. There are two of them. Clause 11 could be removed and the effect of that would be that we would agree to sign a voluntary agreement, which is what the UK government is saying they will do. So there would be equity and respect on both sides. Or uh, Clause 11 could be amended to give the Parliament, this Parliament, the proper right to consent. If the UK government does either of these things, then we have a deal. It is perfectly reasonable. So let's see if Ruth Davidson has any influence whatsoever on her UK colleagues, or as usual, is she simply going to do whatever she's told? Ruth Davidson. The First Minister has multiple times there talked about claiming to be reasonable, but the reality that we have seen this week is nationalist MPs on the floor of the House of Commons turning on their erstwhile friends in Wales, accusing them of capitulating. Does that sound reasonable to her? Because we have seen this week, we have seen the SNP revert to tight, the same tired old lines from a party which isn't even trying anymore to reach out to people across Scotland. There is a deal to be done here. The Welsh have backed it, other parties in this chamber back it, business wants her to back it. So I say to her, for once, will you do a deal in the national interest and not your nationalist interest? First Minister. This deal, this deal is not in the national interest. That's why I won't sign up to it. And that's the difference between me and Ruth Davidson. I... I don't agree with the decision Wales has arrived at, but I respect the right to take it. That's the nature of devolution. But surely Ruth Davidson is not suggesting that the policy of this parliament should be decided by the Welsh Labour Party, for goodness sake. And Ruth Davidson, Ruth Davidson appears to be oblivious to the current constitutional settlement. Right now, before a Section 30 order can be passed, changing the nature of the powers of this parliament, this parliament has to agree to it. It can't be done without our consent. All we are reasonably putting forward is the proposition that that same rule should apply to any regulations restricting the powers of our parliament because of Brexit. Now, presiding officer, I know 
that Ruth Davidson's view is that we should simply let Westminster do what it wants. Uh, that, is why Ruth Davidson, that is why Ruth Davidson is so shamefully silent while her party deports British citizens. It's why she is so shamefully silent when her party imposes the rape clause uh, on women and forces more people to food banks. But you know, it is one thing to put up with grotesque Tory policies in areas that are out with our responsibility. That's bad enough. We should not ever open the door to that in areas that are our responsibility. This government, this government will not do that. And as I said earlier, presiding officer, if that makes us the only or the last party prepared to stand up for the rights and the powers of this Scottish Parliament, that is exactly what we will do.